Welcome to part two of the Chord Melody Crash Course. In this lesson, I'm going to take the skills and concepts that you learn in part one and apply them to a more advanced piece of music. We're going to learn the traditional fiddle tune, Boil Them Cabbages Down. It's going to be fun and hands-on, and it might just take your ukulele playing to a whole new level. So let's get started. I'm going to play the arrangement for you once, and then we'll go back and learn it piece by piece. Here's what the arrangement sounds like. There it is. Four phrases. Um, the first phrase and the second phrase and the fourth phrase are pretty much identical. The third phrase is something different. So let's start at the beginning. The melody of this piece, thankfully, happens almost exclusively on the first string. All of the notes, except one, as we'll see, fall on the first string. And if you remember from part one, that's a really good thing. Because when we keep the melody on the first string, it makes it easier for us to add the chord underneath it. So here's the melody of Boil Them Cabbages Down, note for note. One, two, ready, go. Now you can see that all of the notes except for that last one fall on the first string of the ukulele. And that's, like I said, exactly what we're hoping for. Now let's look at the chords that accompany this melody. Starts on a G chord. One, two, ready, go. G, and then to a C, back to a G, now to a D7. G. C, now G, D7, and G. Those are the chords in that order. That's the chord progression. Let's try it one more time. One, two, G chord. C chord. G. D7. G. C. G. D7 and G. Okay, so how do we combine that melody and these chords? Well, as you can see, we're in luck here. We're in luck because the chords that we're playing just so happen to have the notes of the melody in the highest sounding voices of each one of those chords. When we, when we play the G chord, we just happen to have the B note, which is the first note of the melody. When we go to a C chord, we just happen to have the right note in the right place to give us the melody. When we go to the D7 chord, we just, once again, happen to have the A note in the highest sounding voice, which is the note of the melody. So we're, we're really striking it rich here. This is, this is really lucky that it just works out this way. So the chord melody arrangement of this theme would go like this. One, two, ready, go. everything's all good right up until that very last chord. But before we get there, make sure you've got the strum pattern the way I was doing it, which is down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. 
that's going to give us that sort of fiddle kind of uh, rhythm of the fiddle bow kind of a thing long short short long short short long short short long so we go down down up down down up down down up down let's try it one more time together starting on g one a two a one two here we go Now, as I said, everything's good. We get the melody note where we want it in the chord for every one of those chords except one, that last one. Do you notice where the problem is with this last chord? We want the melody note to be the G, third finger on the second string. But if we play a regular G chord, which note comes out as the melody note? Which note is in the spotlight? The spotlighted note is the highest sounding note, which in this case is B. So the note that we want to hear is buried inside the chord. So how do we make that note, which is at the moment sort of buried in the middle of the chord, how do we make that one stand out? Well, as you might have guessed, we have to get rid of the highest sounding note in this case. We have to get rid of any notes that are higher than the note that we want to hear clearly. So that means somehow we have to not play the first string. Now that would be pretty easy if I was playing with my thumb. I'd just roll three of the strings and not play the first string. But in this case, I'm not using my thumb to play. I am using my strumming finger. And so how do I make, how do I strum all four strings and yet only hear three of them. Well, I have to mute the first string. I have to do that mute with my left hand. There's a couple ways to do it. You could just hold a regular G chord, the way you always do, and then just loosen up on the middle finger. Okay, just, just lift that middle finger slightly and still keep touching the string, but just take the pressure off. And that will mute that string so that when you try to play it, the string won't speak and you won't hear that note. See, now I'm getting the G note that I want to hear front and center. You could also try the way that I tend to do it, which is by using the underside of one of your other fingers. In this case, I would probably use the ring finger, which is already in play on the G note on the E string, I'm going to use the underside, the fleshy side of that finger to lightly touch the adjacent string so that when I try to play that A string, nothing happens. Okay, so that third finger right there is doing double duty. It's holding one note down on the E string and it's also gently touching the A string so that I don't hear that string. So that makes uh, the chord sound like this. Okay, and so even though it looks like I'm holding a G chord, you're only hearing just those three strings. These are the kinds of things that we have to do in order to create this convincing illusion of chord melody. It might seem like a lot of work, but it's really essential and it makes all the difference that we take care with which note is the highest note in every chord that we play. Okay, don't forget that the arrangement from this lesson is linked in the description below this video. So click on that free link, download the PDF, print it off, and have it there with you as you're practicing at home. I could end the lesson there, and if you've already had enough and uh, you're already full, then just pause the video or stop and just leave it at that. But for those of you who are looking for something a little bit extra, something a little bit special, I want to end with this strumming technique that will really take this arrangement to a new level. It's a strumming technique that I use a lot. It's called the, um, I call it the double up strum. 
and it just uses the uh, the thumb and the index finger. The thumb goes up across the strings, which is kind of unusual. We don't do that a lot using the, the thumb nail. The thumb goes up and it's followed by the index finger. So in one motion, you get two sounds. And if we combine this with a single downstroke, we get this sound. Essentially, three uh, sounds for just two moves, down and up. This means that we can get this fiddle rhythm, long, short, short, long, short, short, long, but at a much faster tempo. So if I, if I use this strum and I play Boil Them Cabbages down, it can sound, with some practice, like this. And I'll leave you with this as a, as a final challenge for those of you who are ready for it. Here's Boil Them Cabbages using the double up strum. One, two, here we go. There you have it, something to uh, sink your teeth into and have some fun with. I hope you've enjoyed this two-part lesson on a condensed version of the finer points that go into getting a start on chord melody, the art and science of solo ukulele. Don't forget to stop by theukuleleway.com. That's where I'm giving lessons on this very topic, but in much more detail over the course of six levels of difficulty and across many different genres of music. I hope you'll stop by and take a few lessons. Uh, it's free to sign up, so you have nothing to lose. Check out some of my other YouTube videos, and until the next time, keep on strumming.